Julie, um, I have a question about you know strategy, assuming that you win, because uh, you know Texas's governor Greg Abbott, uh, along with the lieutenant governor, um, they've both been incredibly irresponsible during the pandemic. Um, I really appreciate the message that you have about healthcare. I totally agree with you, um, but assuming you win, uh, you know, how do you see yourself, uh, you know, basically? Pressuring not just the Republican Party, but also the Democratic Party that has pretty much rejected any real solutions to health care, especially Medicare for all. Well, I think that again, this is a real opportunity to explain the benefits of Medicare for all and to kind of pull off the mask that um, Greg Abbott and even before him, his predecessor, you know, Rick Perry had when it came to even just the Affordable Care Act. I know how to explain that to Republicans in a way that that makes their eyes kind of pop and say, wait a second, I had no idea that's how we financed healthcare in Texas. And yeah, we have an exorbitant uh, property tax because we're paying for uninsured care in our uh, emergency rooms. Mm -hmm. We've given $100 billion of our income tax dollars to other states. And if we are lucky enough to have insurance tied to employment that could go away in the blink of an eye, you know, for let's say a pandemic that comes that a gov neither a governor nor a president do anything about. And, um, and in, in fact, if we want to start you know, going through the myths of Medicare for all, that's one of my favorite things to do. I love playing myth busters on Medicare for all. But I think that's one of the things that I, I have a, a knack for is explaining how the dollars and cents work to Republicans and say, hey, yeah, if you're really the party of fiscal responsibility, this is the plan that is fiscally responsible. And yeah. it just so happens you save lives and improve outcomes as well. What was the reaction um, of your constituents when you would campaign on Medicare for all? Well, when I explain to people what that looks like and how we're doing it in Texas, most people had this incredible aha moment. In fact, my last voter I talked to tonight, I kid you not, my very last voter I talked to tonight before he went in and cast his ballot, he had the same question, how do, on earth do you do that? How do you get Medicare for all? How do you have universal health care? How are you gonna pay for it? And when you start from that premise, and, and you know, I will say in this case, either his his girlfriend, his partner, his wife, I'm not sure what their relationship was. She actually was a nurse at a hospital. And I said, well, you can probably vouch for this. You know that uh, folks who don't have insurance in Texas end up in our ERs. And she's sitting there shaking her head. And I said, when they, when they go to the emergency room, um, it's the most expensive level of care. And whether that's for something as simple as an ear infection or something uh, like cardiovascular disease, it's incredibly expensive to get that care in an emergency room when it could have been taken care of by a doctor, just in an outpatient setting. And it's like he had his aha moment. He's like, all right, I'm voting for you. So that's what that's the, the frame through which I can explain it. Um, that's what I hope I can bring to Congress and have conversations with folks across the aisle about. All right, uh, last question for you, Julie. If, um, if you win and the Democrats control all three branches of government, which in the beginning of the night seemed very likely, uh, at this point seems still barely likely. Um, and the Speaker of the House says, no, Julie, I'm, I'm, I appreciate that you ran for Medicare for all, but we're not gonna have a vote on Medicare for all. What would be your reaction? I think we have to we have to form that coalition that really um, pushes back against it. Now, look, it's going to be really hard for me if there's if there's something that is better than what we have right now, and it actually comes to the floor for a vote. I'm going to be honest with y'all; it would be really hard for me to vote against that because of how desperate people are right now, truly. And, and I can't vote to keep status quo. So I'm just being really honest with you. But the reality is, I I think there are strength in numbers. I'm encouraged by the number of progressive who have been elected to Congress, um, just even in the cycle, just through the primaries, and um, you know, using that voice, using that power in the numbers. I, I'm hoping we can push back against that narrative and say, no, we deserve at least a vote on this. We deserve a vote. Make people vote on this. Right. And um, I really think that we can rally people again. I know there's special interest money behind this. I'm not being Pollyanna about this on any level. I get that there's big money that wants status quo. Um, but we need to shine a light that that is what is in, impairing our ability to pass universal health care in America. It is it is big money behind that. 100%. All right, you can see why uh, we really like Julie Oliver, a strong progressive running in a purple district in Texas, but no holds barred.
So I'm hoping at the end of the night uh, that I say that Julie Oliver has won the jalapeno in Texas. Uh, all right, thank you for joining us, Julie. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.